Welcome back to another episode of the Amazon Wholesale Podcast. So this week's guest is Steven Reinard, otherwise known as Steven Does Business on Twitter, on Instagram. If you guys are a part of the Amazon community on social media, you've definitely seen him around. He's been putting up huge numbers. He's, I think, I want to say 20 or 21 years old. Uh, he just put up like a $560,000 month in terms of revenue. Uh, he's doing mainly OA. He's doing a little bit of wholesale too. Uh, but he is a seven-figure seller. He's absolutely killing it. He's a young guy. Uh, he's also a Wholesale Network Mastermind member, has been for the last few months. He's been getting in there. He's been active in the community, and uh, we're going to hear about his experience here shortly. So before we get into the conversation, guys, if you're interested in joining us inside the Wholesale Network or inside the Wholesale Network Mastermind, you can apply at wholesalenetwork.io. We'll see if you're a good fit and we'll go from there. So with that, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for jumping on and taking the time with me tonight. Looking forward to chatting with you. You've been putting up crazy numbers, kind of like I alluded to there in the intro. So uh, yeah, man, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's get started by talking about like, let's recap kind of the last couple of months for you. I know you've been doing heavy OA. You just put up a really big month. I think a lot of that was OA. Kind of just like bring us up to speed with where you are in your business. Yeah, so starting in, what is it, like June, July, early August was preparing for back to school. Um, mm -hmm. We put up 700, like a little over 700K in August. And then um, last like 30 days, like 500 and some thousand. Um, and that August was mainly due to back to school, I assume. Like you were probably loading up on the, like the, you know, Sharpies and backpacks and pencils and all that stuff. Yep, all those things across the board. And then just some nice things just lined up perfectly and just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> love that. Love that. Well, that dude, that's a huge, I mean, you're talking almost, you know, that's three quarters of a million dollars in revenue in one month. And how old are you again? Are you 20 or are you 21? Oh, 23. Okay. So you're, you're, that's right. Cause you just recently graduated, but either way, I mean, that's impressive, right? That's that my, I think my biggest month ever was like 505 or 506, something like that. So you have blown me out of the water. So that's impressive. We're looking at, I'm hoping hit between November, and December, $2.1 million in revenue. Between November and December. Yeah. Those two months. I mean, that's, that's not like if you, and I know you have the capital, I know you have access to the product. So like, as long as you time your shipping, right, as long as you, you don't run into any major roadblocks, there's really no reason you won't hit that. Like, I'd be shocked if you didn't. Yeah. It's a little stretch. I pull some capital, have a little fun and run, but you know, it's a, it's definitely doable and possible. Just got to put my head down and fucking grind it. Right. No, it, it'll be fun to shoot for too. Right. And again, like, okay, what worst case you don't sell 2.1, but you sell 1.6, right? Like that's still not a, not a bad place to end up. Right. If, if, even if things go South. Exactly. That's, that's the worst case scenario. And I can't complain about that anyway. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, good stuff, man. So let's break down your business model, right? I know you're, like you said, I know you're heavy OA. I think you're mainly OA, but you are doing some wholesale as well. So why don't you just describe what the model looks like and kind of how you're scaling so quickly? So the model is like whatever makes the most sense, depending on my capital and where I'm at. So if I am like have a ton of cash on the side, I'll hop into more wholesale stuff just because it's easy for me to deploy large amounts of cash real quick, sell right like, run through. OA, the aspects of OA I like is because I don't have unlimited amounts of money, is um there's a little higher margin and there's some like mm -hmm. extra aspects of like cash back and credit card points. You still get in wholesale, but you don't pay the Emilio fees and stuff in OA. Right. But, um, so it bounces back and forth by mainly OA, um, in general, just because of the extra aspects, but I'm going to start rotating a little more toward wholesale just because Q1, I'll have more cash on hand and right trying to not work as much <laughs> yeah like all yeah, exactly. days so I'll have a little more free time so then i'll pivot a little more to wholesale when that time comes right no I, I love that i think that's a good strategy right and so just to clarify so you're saying when you like when you're flush with cash when you've got a lot of capital you're you're doing more wholesale right because it's easier to deploy 10 20 50 100 thousand dollars at a time than it is with OA when you've got to sit there and order, you know, five, 10, 20 units at a time. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. And it depends. Cause like personally, I don't really order at all because like, yeah, you've got I, a team I, that does that. I'll hire that out. 
the team yep. orders. They can do all the fun stuff, deal with the order cancels. My job is just to tell them to keep going, encourage them, yep. how I can help them bob and weave through some of those restraints. But um, with the wholesale, though, like it's just easy. Put the PO in, comes to the warehouse, yep. it's prepped, it's sent back out. Well, and yeah, that I do think that is one, definitely one of the pros of wholesale over OA. And again, nothing wrong with OA, like obviously very viable model, but it is a little easier, like you said, with wholesale, if you're ordering, let's say you're only buying, you know, three or four different products with wholesale, but you're buying, you know, a thousand units each, for example, that's a way easier prep process and a way easier fulfillment process than having to buy or then buying either a bunch of different products at a time or buying in smaller quantities. Uh, so that's definitely one of the benefits. And I know you're you're a partner in a prep center, right? So you're just talking about getting everything sent to the prep center, getting it going. Uh, how's that been going for you guys? Dude, it's been awesome. Shout out Big Cat Distributions or Big Cat. Yeah. Um, no, it's awesome. Like, it's fun to bring it in-house. It adds a little more challenge to my, just because another business on top of it. But Cat's awesome. Great business partner. And it's been a lot of fun to build and see where it goes at the end of the day. because. We're in such an upcoming space where everything's going. You're just going to buy your groceries online. Like you're going to buy everything online yep. in, in that fulfillment space, which is the next really big frontier. I feel like is a lot of fun to be in and growing that those aspects and making those clients happy and everything. And you've got a few partners in that business, right? I know Max is one of them. Are there, are there more or is it just you guys? No, it's just Max and I. Okay, nice. And where are your facilities located? Our uh, two warehouses in Pennsylvania and one in Delaware. And got it. Us a little different. Those aspects is that we'll only deal with higher end sellers because that's the best way for us to give the best customer experience with right the prep center and everything like that. Like higher volume. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about it and as if like, if I ran a prep center, the last thing I would want to do is deal with a bunch of new sellers who probably aren't going to be sending me much volume, right? I'd rather work maybe on a slightly lower margin, but only deal with sellers who are doing big volume because it just seems easier to scale that way. It also just seems like a, less of a headache that way than dealing with newer sellers. And you don't deal with the same issues. Like, oh, uh, like they don't mess things up as much bigger sellers. They just know right. they have the process. They just know how to put it. Like all the basic things that come as you grow, like it's just th those sellers are already there. You know it's coming through. You know they're really not going to deal much gating issues versus like smaller sellers. Are, oh, I got to ungate this thing. It's going to take me a few weeks. And like you have images right. sitting there, or like they're asking you questions, like tons of questions. It's like, are right, the bigger guys? They know what they want. They know what they get, and they're pretty easy in those aspects. Yeah, so much easier to deal with, right? That makes makes way more sense. So when it comes to let's talk about let's get a little tactical, right? When it comes to your OA strategy and your wholesale strategy, so. You did mention on the OA side, you've got people that do the ordering for you. Like you've got a team that's buying products for you. How is that set up? Like, how is that, what does that team look like? So we're running a two person team right now. Um, like, so it's mainly like, uh, I've the one VA, he's ahead of purchasing and, um, like sourcing stuff. And then mm -hmm. there's another virtual assistant who does all my back end stuff, make sure there's no leakage track down missing units um just keep all my back end aligned pretty much right the cases just like the admin basically like admin all those things and um and then my main va him and i are the main sourcers but yeah because like what happens like if you're buying like two at a time hypothetically and you get like order cancels or it takes you all day and you get order cancels. Like it's, it's so annoying as right. It takes forever. But if you're paying someone $3 an hour, yep. like it's not a, as big of an issue. If you get order cancels, like, all right, I'm out three or nine bucks versus like your whole day. Like, holy crap. Like this is right. So <laughs> yeah. When you as the business owner, I mean, you, Steven, your time is worth hundreds of dollars an hour, right? Maybe even oh. thousands. So that's why, yeah, having those folks overseas who you can pay three, four, five, six dollars an hour handle a lot of that grunt work is by far the best way to do it. And it's funny because I my team is set up very similar. So we obviously are are hundred percent wholesale where you're talking about this is your OA team, but I've got just two employees on the wholesale business. 
One of them is the admin, right? His name's Ralph. He works on the back end, doing everything that you just said, cleaning up account health, cleaning up feedback, handing care, taking care of customer questions, reimbursement cases, uh, you know, all of that side of the business. And then you've got uh, Criselda, who's the main, she's basically running operations, but she's doing all the buying, right? So um, that's kind of like the yin and yang process that we have as well. Sounds like we're set up pretty similar to you guys. Yeah. And like the next part of before we're going to build out is like January is just going to be based on me not working as much in the business, but hiring out another probably four or five people to do all the yep. sourcing. And then hopefully I can take a nice step back a few months later and um, spend less time sourcing, but more time like building, web, like figuring out websites. Cause in my whole, my OA business, I do OA, but it's set up like a wholesale business in a lot of ways. Like they hit the same replans, no the right. cycles, and then I'm buying 500 or 1,000 units at a time. Right, exactly. Like, I think earlier this week, I bought four or 5,000 units for a single ASIN. Jeez, for, for OA, you said? Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah, so you really are treating it like a wholesale business, right? But I mean, the key... One of the, like one of the things that I want to touch on that you just mentioned that I think is really important is you said that you're I guess come January right when we're through all this Q4 craziness your goal is to put more people and put more systems in place so that you can work on the business instead of in the business and kind of take a step back and into that management role is that kind of what I'm hearing there exactly and then obviously come back for the Christmas the back to schools of the world but like besides yep. that pretty much back myself out a good amount. Yeah. And, and that's a great way to look at the business, right? I mean, that's exactly what I've done. And I, and I did that, uh, I guess probably close to two years ago. Now I have the team virtually running 95% of the day to day. And that's one of the things too. So I know you're a member of the wholesale network mastermind, right? You have been for a few months now. And that's one of the things that I love about what we're doing inside the mastermind specifically is that we're, yes, obviously we're talking about Amazon and how to sell on Amazon and, you know, the latest strategies for selling on Amazon, but we're doing more than just talking about Amazon, right? We're focusing on how to grow a business, how to grow as an entrepreneur, as opposed to just, well, how do we sell more stuff on Amazon, right? So I know you've been a member of that for at least a few months now. What's kind of been the, like, what's your feedback so far? Like honest feedback about uh, being in the mastermind. No, I really like it. I mean, the people are definitely the next level. Like, you know, there's always a ladder. You're always trying to talk to the next group of people the next. And like, I've kind of hit the top of the OA. Like, I only know right. like one seller who's bigger than me. And uh -huh. I'm not trying to brag, but like, I, I could be very wrong in this aspect too, but I personally know one person who's really much bigger than me. And like, kind of topped out that community. So I'm trying, you know, you're just going to the next one. Yep. With better systems, um, better processes and just how to work on your business better rather than working in your business. Well, and that's, that's like perfectly legitimate, right? You're like, well, Hey, I kind of tapped out my, my network of OA sellers. And like, of course there are OA sellers that are much larger, but at the end of the day, like you kind of, like you said, you need to keep leveling up that group around you because like I, for example, I know inside our mastermind, there are questions that people are asking where like these are questions you can't google them you can't ask chat gpt like the only way to get an answer to some of these questions is from somebody who's been there before and somebody who's bigger than you and it's crazy because i see some like people inside the mastermind asking some of these questions and i'm like i have no idea what the answer is right but then you've got somebody chime in and say oh yeah that's xyz right and you're like holy shit i would have paid like i would have literally paid somebody probably 500 dollars for a consulting call just like to get that answer like that's kind of the level of nuance and the the quality of folks that we have inside there. So yeah, I'm glad, glad you joined and glad that, you know, you're having a good experience. Yeah, uh, and, and with, with that too, I mean, let's go ahead and talk about the wholesale side, right? Let's talk about the wholesale side of your business. So when you do have capital and you are looking to deploy a lot of capital at once, which as we know is easier with wholesale, what, like, how do you do it? Right. What's your move? Um, I'm being frank. Usually my friends have something that's going yeah, go which ahead. is a great testimonial to networking and not being, you know, on an island of one inside this business. You literally just piggyback on your friend's deals as you should, right? As long as they're cool with it. Yeah, they don't like, they'll be like, hey, we're cooking the, all right, like, let me get any, like, I literally like, all right, let me go get an 18 wheeler of it. 18 wheeler drops. Yeah, it's like, I'll, I'll take a truck. I'll take a full truck. <laughs> yep, take a full truck. 
and then ran through it and then it's like all right when it's time to re-up you re-up on it it's like stuff's like not rock time especially when you have the network to do it right they plug you in on those deals and those things but my wholesale business is pretty basic i did it like i really grind wholesale for a week after asd like two years ago and then i was like i still like la so i just yeah rip it well, it, dude, you did it, it like the perfect way. Like you did it the really the easy way, right? You're like, all right, I know OA. I'm really good at OA. So I'm just going to crush it with OA. And instead of spending all my time, you know, getting into wholesale and, you know, trying to land all these suppliers myself, instead, I'm just going to get really good at networking and become friends with everybody in the community who's doing wholesale. And so when they find deals and they need someone to come in with capital to do a group buy, guess who's the first person they call, right? Me. Well, in the meantime, I'm, uh, you know, growing my OA business and making a ton of money that way. So like, you kind of have the cheat code, really. <laughs> like, you, you did it the easy way, you know? I mean, that's the name of the game is like, the truth is like, only be good at one or two things. Like, you know, right. the amount of people you probably see, they're like, they do OA, they do RA, they do wholesale. They're like, yeah, I do all these things. But like, what if you just be good at one thing, but like really good at one thing? That's honestly, that's like very wise advice coming from someone who's only 23. I had, so I had a tweet about this, I think two or three days ago, where it was something along the lines of like the easiest way to spot a brand new entrepreneur is someone who says there's, they're working on six businesses, right? Or three businesses or five different things. That's like such a telltale sign of somebody who is just brand new to entrepreneurship. Cause it's like, listen, serious entrepreneurs, even the highest level ones, they're really only focused on one thing at a time, right? They might have like, for example, I have three different businesses, but you know, I'm really only focused on one, right? Like I, the other two are being run by teams and by operators. My focus is, is dedicated to one direction. So that's a great point on your end. It's like, find what it is that you specialize in and just become the master and then find people for everything else. Exactly. It's easier to become a master and teach everybody else it versus like, you know, Oh, so Walmart, eBay, Target, like, like, what if you just pick one and just be so right. good at it that like, there's nothing like nobody can beat you in it. Like, exactly. And the, the worst is when somebody's like, oh, I, I, uh, I day trade and I do crypto and I do Forex and I do e-com and I do real estate. I'm like, what? You need to do one of those things. Right. No. And I trade, but my one buddy is like crazy good at trading. Shoots me a text, gives me a call. Hey, buzz. All right, I'm in. Like that's yeah, exactly. Well, again, that goes back to the networking. Like that's not really you. Like do you know getting distracted and and focusing on a different business. That's you saying, okay, I'm going to leverage my network so I don't have to focus on this, right? And that's how like it works. Is like when you start building up the network, and a lot of it just become personal with people. It's like you don't have to be like the best seller. If you're a great talker, you become a good talker. Excuse me, and provide value the amount of things you'll get from other people will be so much. And from the next exactly. Time, Cause I just went to Amazon accelerate. I don't know if you mind me touch on this. Like, Oh, it's go ahead. Highest level Amazon conference I've ever been. I'm not affiliated. Yep. With this. Like I was talking to some people that do over a hundred million dollars a year. Like I got contacts with doing over a hundred million dollars a year on Amazon, like blew my mind of like what was possible. And my only thing there was like, I literally went to a half a session. I was like, this is, does not apply to me. I spent my entire time down in the general area just talking. Just That's exactly through. what you should have done, right? Yep. And if I, whenever I decided to go toward private label at some point, it's already like the network already built. There's already people there in place to be able to talk to. And like, I didn't even think about doing private label until a week and a half ago, but. Yeah. Like, well, and that's, that's the beauty of, of taking that approach is like you go to events like that, you go to trade shows, you meet other people in the community who are already doing what it is that you want to do. And it's like, they have the roadmap, right? You don't need to, like, why would you ever spend weeks or months in your situation, like watching YouTube videos to try to learn private label or, you know, reading blogs or whatever, when it's like, you could just literally text the person that you met last week at, at that show and say, Hey, I'm working on private label. I've got this question. Uh, can you help me? And they're like, oh yeah, it's X, Y, Z. Like, okay, great. Next. Like, and you just, because you're taking action, they're going to be so much more willing to help you. Um, especially people that are serious and at a high level. So that's, that's really good that you did that. Like I, I bet the ROI on that trip for you is going to be massive. 
oh, it's going to be huge. And I'm definitely going next year and the following year. Like, is you have a whole new caliber of people, like, compared to any other show. I've, like, all the other ones are great to go to. It was just, like, usually, like, a lot of the OA and wholesale ones, like, I'm, I'm me and a larger seller. OA, I'm usually one of the biggest ones. And then right. wholesale, like, I'm middle of the ground. This, I was a, I was a minnow. And yeah, it's, exactly. It's a shark swarm. But, like, you know, just networking with them, becoming friends with them, trying to take them out to dinner. Just, it's so much easier when you have them, those people in your back pocket as going on the next thing. And, and one last point on this, and then we'll kind of move on to the next topic, which is going to be Q4 tips and strategy. Just the, the concept of being in the room with people that were like, you're the dumbest person in the room, right? Like, I don't know. I don't remember what the quote exactly, but it's something along the lines of like, if, if you're not the dumbest person in the room, you got, you're in the wrong room. Right. Um, and that's like, I have very similar experience myself. There was a, I guess up until about two years ago, my Amazon network was two people, right? One of which is now in the mastermind, the other of which is no longer selling on Amazon. So I could, I had one, basically two people to talk to. And it wasn't until I paid to join a very high level group of Amazon sellers. And most of them were private label sellers. I'd say probably 90% of them were. But dude, I was the smallest person in that community by far. Like I was that minnow surrounded by sharks, people that have been selling on Amazon since I was in like kindergarten, right? Like big time guys. And I remember being like, whoa, I'm intimidated. Like a lot of this is going over my head, but I know I'm in the right room because these guys are all super legit. Exactly. And that's the name of the game. If you're doing all right or just starting holes, like just figure out someone who's doing a little bit more than you and just reach out to them. Yep. hundred percent. Chop it up. Very good advice. Very good advice. Awesome. So let's jump into uh, some Q4 tips and strategies. So as we're recording this, we're right up at the end of November, or sorry, September, 2024, we are headed into Q4, lots of good uh, sales months ahead, right? The next three months are going to be awesome. Uh, and quite honestly, if you're just now starting to prepare for Q4, it's too late for the most part, there is some stuff that can be done last minute. But in general, Stephen, what have you been doing, uh, you know, weeks or months in advance to really maximize the opportunity that we have here over the next three months? So I've been starting to send stuff in for Q4, getting my purchasing. And I'm OA, so my lead time is usually a little quicker, I believe, than most wholesalers. Right. Um, but it's right now just trying to get product in there because um, those FCs are getting pretty backed up in general. And yep. you want your stuff in FC transfer for Black Friday and throughout December. So right now, just doubling down on buying stuff for Q4 and really just like making sure I have the lowest price because depending on the products, if you deal with some people that do FBM, even probably in the wholesale world, a lot of you deal with some FBM sellers and stuff that like might mess up your listings, but just making sure you have that lowest price in general to yep. make sure you're the most competitive during the season. But we try to like send FTLs when we can. We have one going out yep. Monday. It lowers our costs so like so much. I mean, Amazon freight and stuff. Just I don't know if you utilize them, Corey. Oh yeah, shipping shipping FTL. So this is a huge. I mean, really, this is a, a tip for Q4, but this is a tip for year round for those of you guys that are shipping decent volumes to FBA. Right, talking about shipping FTL shipments or full truckload shipments. So. And Steven, I, I don't know about your experience, but for us, a lot of times we'll get an FTL quote and an LTL quote. And a lot of times our FTL quote is right around the same price or maybe a little more expensive than the LTL quote. But the beauty of FTL is you get the whole truck and when it gets dropped off at Amazon, you get what's called live unload, meaning Amazon checks your, your units into inventory as they're pulling it off the truck. They're literally unloading it live, right? And so uh, with our FTL shipments, we had one last week, it got picked up in the morning and it got delivered that afternoon and checked in as it got delivered, right? So literally from pickup to check in to receiving within like six hours. Uh, and you're, ne you're never going to get that with SPD or LTL. In LTL, you know, you're literally, I think I sent two pallets. It's the same price for me to send an entire truck. Versus and the, the beauty... Well, and the beauty of it too, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but I want to make this caveat, right? Because people are hearing this thinking like, oh, well, 
a full truckload shipment is anywhere from like 24 to 26 pallets. I'm never, I never send that much. Well, the beauty of shipping full truckload is you don't need to fill the whole truck. You just get the whole truck, right? You're paying for the whole truck. So you reserve it. If you only send one pallet, you can, right? But FTL tends to make sense around like six to eight pallets, sometimes a little more. Uh, you can pay the same price as, as LTL, but get that live unload and get that like same day delivery sometimes. Yeah, there's checking time to be quicker than any other ways. And there's just saves you so much money on the sh inbound ship. Because if you're sending like SPD, like your, like your cost is going to be, I think, right around 70 cents a pound ballparked versus um, an FTL where if you pack out like just one full line, like 24 pallets, not even double stacking, like right. you can get that down to less than two cents a pound if you really utilize Dude. space. So we, uh, this was a group buy that we did in the mastermind. This was like a few months back. I don't think you participated in this one, but we had like three or four buyers on the deal and we got everybody to get their shipment to go to the same location. So we were able to take four buyers, consolidate all four POs into a single FTL shipment. And they ended up paying, I think it was two cents per unit in inbound shipping on a product that weighed like three pounds. So yeah, that is the power of some, you know, these FTL shipments, like they can save you so much time. And again, it, it's just speed to market. Your stuff checks in and gets received a lot quicker than if you ship SPD or LTL. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause like at this point I wouldn't send any LTL. Hell no. No, no, no. You're... By the time a Q4 hits. <laughs> oh God. Honestly. So again, we're recording this on like September 27th. If you're shipping LTL today, like, it, you might, it might be a month. Like it honest to God might take a month it, depending on the FC, depending on a few factors, but like, it's not unheard of. If you're if you ship today, your LTL shipment might check in, you know, two, three, four weeks from now. So what your middle of October, then you're an FC transfer for another two or three weeks. And now it's like, okay, you're checked in available maybe by the first or second week of November. And then at that point, it's like, that's crunch time. So yeah, it, 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 I know their cutoff, I think, is like October 12th is the official, or October 15th, I think, is the official cutoff yeah. to get stuff in in time for Black Friday and, and uh, December. But really, I'd say beginning of October to be perfectly safe. Agreed. I mean, it's better to play it safe than sorry, no matter how you do it. And then if you're still stuck, or hypothetically, you're selling like beauty products in that are 50, 100 in a box. Like if I was doing it, I'd be doing small ish shipments of just small parcel um, Amazon optimized and just ripping them across the country. Cause at least your risk is so much more spread out versus like, let me consolidate it on the one shipment. But like, then you, if, if it takes weeks, then it's up, like this cost savings wasn't worth it. And that happened to me last year. And I, I lost like 40 some thousand dollars on that. Like <laughs> one big ship, massive shipment went missing. And I was like, Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Um, but like in general, it's like, this time of year is smaller shipments just sending it out and if you're sending like fba and small parcel like amazon optimize is the way to go to avoid the placement fees and then you're getting so much more buy box um share because i think it's a 21 percent increase of buy box share if you do amazon optimize since it goes i believe that 20 it's gonna go to one of 28 cross stocks i could be wrong on this number and of a hundred and then each one of those cross stocks lines up to about, I think, 30 or 40 fulfillment centers. So when you go Amazon Optimize, it goes pretty much everywhere, which will increase your buy box share. Yeah, that's that's a huge tip right there. And then um, let's see, when it comes to shipping, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the main hack, right, is, is shipping FTL. Um, but another big tip I have, a, really a Q4 specific tip for a lot of you guys, especially if you guys are selling stuff that is seasonal and does tend to spike in November and December specifically is look at the keep a graph from let's say black Friday through Christmas of last year and pay attention to the buy box price, because what you guys are going to find on a lot of these really hot selling competitive ASINs is that the buy box price actually starts to tank after black Friday, heading into December, maybe even the first week or two of December because you've got a lot of newer sellers who are liquidating stock. They don't really know what they're doing and they're, you know, they're kind of lowballing the price. But what you'll find on a lot of these listings is that these low price sellers will sell out 
relatively quickly. And then the buy box price, you'll see it go from like tanking or maybe even unprofitable. It'll jump back up, like sometimes significantly, right? And it'll go from profitable to sometimes super profitable in that critical week of December 14th through the 21st, which guys, you should make more money from December 14th through the 21st of, of every year than you make in the first, you know, three quarters combined if you're doing it right, right? That is the week, December 14th through 21st. So my advice is, again, pay attention to historical pricing. And on products like that, where you see, you know, usually it tanks and then it jumps back up right before crunch time, just hold your minimum price in your repricer to be kind of high. So that way, when everybody else sells out, you've got plenty of stock and you can just tear through it in the seven to 10 days leading up to Christmas and make a killing, make an absolute killing. Yep, absolutely. And just trying to stay in stock. Don't send stuff in early December, hoping to get it in for like that crunch time. Just Oh yeah, hell no. Just FBM at that point. <laughs> exactly. Um, yep. Yeah, that's, I'm excited though. I'm excited for December. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's always, it's always so much fun. Like it's the best time of year to be an Amazon seller. There are, there's a lot of money to be made all three months of Q4. But like I said, especially in that peak uh, week of December 14th to the 21st, and obviously the Black Friday and, and all the good stuff that comes with that. So yeah, it's going to be fun. If you're, uh, we're, we're loading up on stock too and to get ready for it. Yeah, if you're a wholesale seller, you, like during Black Friday, if you're running low on something, you might want to see if it's OA. I'm just saying. like some yep. of the, No, it's a great, like, great advice. Like, and you could FBM it because I don't know how much you have to buy from your wholesale supplier, but even if you pay a dollar or two more, well, if you have it in hand and it hypothetically makes $10 usually, well, if you can make $8 and pay a little more, but you're getting quicker shipping to you, it's not a yep. bad game to play. Totally. Then, no, that's, that's totally viable, right? Like there's no reason. If you can source your best product from somewhere, even if you have to pay a dollar or two more, it's better than going out of stock, right? Absolutely. Cause that everyone looks, looks forward to the next year of Q4. It's just, you know, I wish I had more money. I wish I bought more. Yeah. Stuff. And, um, well, and, and that actually leads into one of the tips that I was going to give, right? You just said like, Oh, I wish I'd, I wish I bought more of this. Like that is my every single year after Q4. I say the same thing to myself. I'm like, Oh, I wish I would have bought more of XYZ product, right? I wish I would have bought more. I wish I would have bought more. So if this is your first Q4, don't be afraid to go deep into the products where it makes sense, right? There are some products where if you bought, you know, double or even triple what you plan to buy, you'd still sell it all. So just my, my advice is don't leave money on the table, but obviously don't, don't overextend as well. Exactly. Like that, I mean, they go a little risk, de-risk a little bit in different, a few different brands, but just double down on what works. Totally. hundred percent. I don't try to make any drastic moves. Like just play the game as you usually do. Just have more inventory. Yep. Very good advice. Any, uh, any other parting tips or tricks for us, Steven? Oh, what do we got here? I feel like I got one at least. Um, just go make, go make videos about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, if you're new Amazon seller, you don't know many people like send cold DMs. The people post about your day. I talked to a wholesale supplier and I found nothing. That's awesome. Somebody wants to hear about that because someone else had the exact same thing that happened to them today. That's and a great maybe point. you guys can bond over that. And all right, tomorrow you guys call some, a few different wholesale suppliers and oh, we found one that's good. All right, now you both work on that to put a PO together. You yep. drive down the price, send it all to the same 3PL, and then just repeat it, like run your business with your friends. Like some of my, a lot of my best friends, I knew them through the internet. Like, yep. and now like we've made hundreds of thousands of dollars together. Like they've made me and I've made that, like you bounce up back and forth. It's a game of you just share and then. Everybody so it's wins. It's like you win and then the team wins and then they win more than you. It's like a, a, a flywheel, like a never ending cycle basically. Exactly. And Miles has a great quote where he's like the, I don't remember what he says exactly, but he's like, your Amazon revenue is directly related to the, the five Amazon sellers you spend the most time with. Right. It's like that old quote, but with like the Amazon seller spin on it, which it's true. It's, it's a fact. It is so a fact. 
like the people who last in this business are the people who have friends in it. Like, yep. doesn't matter like how small they are, how big they are. It's making Instagram or Twitter, wherever you like to do it. Talk to other people on there. Like, at, just like my my thing is like, you know, you go to a bar or you're on a dating app, you shoot a message, you go up to a girl, get denied, shot down. Okay, you say, all right, now I'm gonna go home, I'm done. No, you go to the next one. Okay, see, yeah, exactly. hey, do you wanna hop on a Zoom call and source or um, look at these suppliers, whatever you wanna do with them, like shoot the shit. Right. The same thing applies to Amazon. Like, just keep going and pushing forward. And percent reaching out to people and trying to build a network. Very good advice. Very good advice. Well, and this is for the listeners out there. So guys, if you are in search of that network or of that community of, of sellers who are already successful, who are doing what it is that you want to do, and you're interested in joining us inside the Wholesale Network, you can head over to wholesalenetwork.io. Apply to join us there. Like I said, I'm in there. Steven's in there. We've got, I think, 160 folks between the mastermind and the regular Wholesale Network group. So we'd love to see you on the inside. With that said, Steven, where can people find out more about you? Uh, they can find me at Steven Does Business. I'm mainly on Instagram. I'm on Twitter a little bit. And then Big Cat Distribution. And you're Steven with a PH, right? With Steven PH, Does yeah. Business with a PH. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, if you've watched this far, thank you so much for your time. Do us a huge favor. Like the video if you're watching it on YouTube or give us a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple to help this podcast get in front of more people. Steven, thank you for your time. I uh, will talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you.